right, we're here with Aaron Rankis for the monthly hardware update. Aaron, what's going down in the world of hardware? Well, there's lots of new stuff happening right now. Um, Intel just put out a new chip. Uh, there's a new chipset for the new chip. Uh, it's uh, Socket 2011. Uh, yeah, real appropriate name, you know. It's already 2012. Get ahead of the program for once. Anyway, um, that's going to make it interesting for desktops, and it looks like it's going to be a desktop and server chip. Um, they still haven't talked too much about that. But there's eight slots of memory on the board now, and because there's eight slots of memory, that means we can put a ton more memory on the board, because normal, uh, normally now there were only four, so they doubled the amount of memory space you can put on a, on a board, which is kind of cool. Transformer Prime came out. I bought myself one, because I really liked it. Um, <laughs> I have played with it for a few weeks now, and I've realized there are some shortcomings. Uh, it's a good device in general, but uh, yeah, they took away a few things from the original Transformer, and they, but they added a few things too, so it's, it's not horrible, but I think they went more for aesthetics than they did for function, and uh, that's not always the greatest thing to do. Uh, I mean, the solid aluminum case makes it nice and durable. Uh, but the solid aluminum case also makes it really hard to get a Wi-Fi signal. So uh, that wasn't the smartest idea. Um, they subtracted one of the USB ports. The original Transformer had two. This one has one on the, uh, on the dock, the keyboard dock that comes with it. Um, the big thing I do like about it, though, is the seamless ability to plug in any SD card, and it'll read it and mount it as media. Um, most portable devices don't do that. Most portable devices, you'll plug in the card. It either needs a special format or it needs something special to make it work. Um, I've plugged in external hard drives to this thing, and it just works. It plugs in and goes, hey, look, there's some more data. Um, new to this Android, there's a file manager now. They didn't come with a file manager. You can always download one, but it wasn't the same. Uh, the file manager in this does some really interesting things because of the ability to grab new data and media. So that's, that's kind of neat. Uh, it's really fast, which is nice. Um, but there's also uh, adjustments in the settings. Uh, this is the first one I've played with, uh, first Android type, well, actually, the first portable type device that gives you almost like a power saving thing, like on a laptop, where you can go and you really want performance now, you set it to performance mode and it moves faster. If you want battery life, you set it to eco mode. If you want something right in between, you have a balanced mode. There's three settings, and, and that's kind of cool. Um, I hope more pl more uh, portable devices develop that ability because, I mean, if they did, they'd have longer battery life or better performance when you needed them. It's more of an on-demand thing, which is, is neat. It's good to see them going that way because, I mean, computers have been doing it for ages. Why not do it with a portable device you know, and extend the battery life or improve the performance when needed? Because um, you don't always need that super whiz-bang speed to get things done. I mean, if you're surfing the web, you don't need to use four cores on a processor. <laughs> But, you know, if you're doing something intensive, 3D graphics and rendering, you, you want four cores to work. So, that's really neat. Um, AMD has released its new video card, the 7000 series, which uh, looks to be really good. But, to be honest, lately AMD has been making a bit of a, a lackluster performance as re in regards to brand new hardware. Uh, they make it a little bit better, but not a lot better. They used to, what used to happen is in the next release and revision, there'd be a big jump. Um, now we're seeing incremental increases in ability and speed. Um, and that's, it's interesting to see that because that, what that does is it sort of slows things down hardware wise. Because a company's not going to release the newest whiz bang, hottest, greatest, well, the competition, I should say, isn't going to release the newest, latest whiz bang device if it's only competing against itself. Um, which makes things tough. Hence the reason why also Intel has actually slowed its scheduled uh, processing releases. Because the, uh, the FX chip from AMD is released, and it was, it, it was slated to be the next big chip from AMD. And uh, it's doing, it, it does some things better than old chips, but other things it doesn't do as well, which is, is kind of odd, because that, that usually doesn't happen. It's usually a, you know, an incremental increase in performance overall. You know, Windows 8 is on the horizon. Uh, there's all talk of what's going to happen and change when you go to Windows 8. Um, there was this whole all the way across the platform thing from smartphone to server 
was going to be exactly the same interface. I think Windows has scaled that back a bit because they've realized that's, you know, you, you really don't need big funky buttons with animations on it on your server. Um, nobody's looking at it. <laughs> um, and, and on your PC, touch big colossal touch buttons aren't the greatest idea either because most of us don't have touch screens on our home computers. But, of course, that's, you know, interfaces are changing too, so who knows what's going to happen in the next year in regards to that. Um, because they, they've released a new touch interface that looks pretty cool. Um, the new the Galaxy Note te Note device that I was telling that I was talking about last couple months, it's still not out, but there was a commercial for it on the Super Bowl. Go figure that. Anyway, um, the, the um, that device uses a combination touch system, uh, a lot like some of the um, higher end uh, tablet devices that were out before, like PC tablets. Um, Fujitsu makes a life book that does it. Uh, there's a uh, where you you flip the screen around and you can touch you can use the touch interface or you can use a pen so you can do more precision work with the pen because it hits like one pixel at a time whereas your finger or thumb you know not so precision when it comes to touch devices. Hopefully either it works or it doesn't and they move on if it doesn't and if it does they it, it explodes and becomes the next great interface but we'll see. Uh, still waiting for, you know, that old motion interface from, uh, fr from the movies like Minority Report and all that, where the stuff floats in front of you and you don't need a screen. That'll be awesome, but yeah, I don't see that anytime soon. Solid state drives are dropping in price, thanks to, uh, the fact that they're finally starting to be able to kick back up production after the, the issues that happened in, uh, Thailand with the flooding and several other problems that happened around the world. We're in such a global economy now. Change someplace else affects price everywhere now. So, uh, yeah, I, I, but I've seen a weird uptick in price increase in standard hard drives. Spinning storage has gotten more expensive over the last month or so. Not sure why that is. Um, there's no real good reason for it because, as I said, production has increased again. So, not sure why they're making it more expensive. But, hey, maybe they need to make up the money that they lost. That's about it for, for now. Uh... But the new year is definitely promising to be an interesting year for technology. Uh, lots of stuff going on all at once, a bunch of little things, and uh, it may come together to make some really cool new gadgets. We'll, we'll have to see.